So another law professor, John Dernbach, and I spent several years working on a book called Legal Pathways to Deep Decarbonization of the United States that laid out how U.S. federal, state, and local law need to change for the U.S. to move away from fossil fuels. It became quite clear in the course of, of that work that one of the major tasks was building a, a massive amount of new renewable energy capacity, especially wind and solar. But it was also apparent that one major obstacle to that was local opposition. So we came up with the idea of creating the Renewable Energy Legal Defense Initiative to provide legal support for those wanting to build uh, these projects uh, at, for the people in those communities who wanted those projects, but that were facing opposition. When we started uh, Reality, we teamed with the law firm where I'd been a partner for many years, Arnold and Porter, and I'm still affiliated, and they seconded uh, one of their litigation associates, Laura Cottingham, to spend half her time over the course of a year working pro bono on these cases. Uh, so when that uh, year was up, Hilary Adun, who's one of the lawyers working for the Sabin Center, uh, took on the leadership in the uh, legal cases. And all of this work is done strictly on a pro bono basis. I would define success for Reldy if we are uh, able to help push more of these uh, renewable projects across the finish line. If we're able to provide support to the local communities and residents who want these facilities and give them the legal help they need to have the projects happen. Well, the biggest single hurdle to rapidly building out renewable infrastructure is probably the lack of a legal requirement um, to do that. Uh, 29 states have renewable portfolio standards that are driving more renewable energy, but we need a lot more than that. And President Biden is calling for uh, a much greater build out. But one of the major uh, hurdles uh, when people do want to build renewables turns out to be that in many places, there are some people who don't want them, who uh, either litigate against them or persuade local town boards to ban them or make them very difficult to build. So that has turned into a big obstacle. RELDI released a report this year on instances of local opposition to renewable energy facilities across the United States. And we found over 150 cases in which there were siting battles over particular wind or solar energy facilities and around 100 local laws that were aimed at blocking renewable energy development. I would imagine that these are underestimates um, and that there are probably even more instances of anti-renewable local laws and citing battles that we were not able to locate, but it goes to show that local opposition is widespread throughout the country and in, in some cases can um, delay or impede development in a particular place. And a lot of the concerns about renewable energy makes sense like any type of development wind and solar energy facilities have impacts. Those impacts should be and can be mitigated and it's really important for developers to communicate early with host communities and hear their concerns and work with them to mitigate them as, as well as they can. Sometimes concerns about renewable energy facilities, however, are based on concerns that don't have much merit. There's a lot of misinformation about um, health impacts that aren't real that are caused by wind and solar energy facilities. There are a lot of myths out there, unfortunately, and so RELDI has also tried to provide real, credible, science-based information about the impacts of renewable energy to combat this misinformation and allow community members to come to their own informed conclusions about renewable energy. One thing that I think really important is that we sometimes see a false dichotomy between agriculture and renewable energy. Sometimes there is concern that siting 
wind turbines, for example, on farmland will harm farmland preservation or open space. But the farmers that we represent see renewable energy facilities as a really critical supplemental income source that can actually allow them to stay on their land. And this is especially important right now because in many parts of the country, farming is becoming a lot more challenging. Uh, farming might become more unpredictable because of changing weather patterns with climate change. And so farmers want to insulate themselves from bad years by diversifying their income source and participating in a winter solar energy project can do that. And farmers also support renewable energy because they're concerned about climate change and know that we need to transition to a renewable energy economy in order to prevent further impacts. And so I, apart from the um, health impacts I discussed before, one of the concerns about renewable energy is um, tied up in farmland preservation. And as I said, I think that's kind of a false choice. And it can, in fact, in many instances, be a way to uh, support local agriculture. It's best to get involved early in the process because if people wait too late to talk to lawyers, sometimes the uh, best opportunities for legal intervention will have passed. Uh, there are short statutes of limitations. There are requirements of participation in the administrative process. So people who are uh, communities that are supporting renewable energy projects that they're seeing facing local opposition uh, should get in touch with us sooner rather than later. Don't wait till the last minute. RELZI can provide different types of assistance to clients and we have provided different types of assistance to clients across the country. We sometimes get involved where someone reaches out to us because their town is considering a local law that would be unreasonably restrictive of wind or solar energy development. And in that case, we can write to the local government on the client's behalf and express concerns about the legislative proposal, point out any legal vulnerabilities in the proposal, and also make clear that there are local community members who support wind and solar energy projects and would not be supportive of legislation that would um, ban or unreasonably restrict that type of development. We have also represented clients in court cases, um, both at the trial and the appellate levels. Um, in some cases, challenging unreasonable ordinances that local governments have adopted to block wind or solar energy development, and in some cases, supporting local governments that have uh, permitted a wind or solar energy facility and are then challenged in court by local project opponents. So we would come in to support the town in that case if the town is being supportive of wind or solar. We also represent clients in administrative proceedings on siting permits at the state level that wind and solar energy facilities sometimes need depending on the state. And that is an opportunity for local people who have a, a stake in the facility to submit testimony, retain experts, and submit a, re a report by the expert, um, provide briefing to harness the evidence in the record to make legal arguments about why the facility should be permitted. And that's the kind of thing that can be challenging to do without a lawyer. And so we come in and we provide legal support for clients in those instances. It has made a huge difference um, for the Friends for the Mind and for the project itself. Um, Raldi has provided the friends the opportunity to participate in the Article 10 process in a legal way that would not have been possible without them. Um, Raldi helped us receive intravenor funding. Um, they helped us submit legal testimony. They've also helped us find um, expert testimonies to kind of testify on our behalf. Um, a lot of that through the Article 10 process would not have been possible without them. We have a group of 30 to 50 people, but we do not have the lawyer or the legal expertise 
to kind of participate in a way that the other group members did. Everyone had legal representation. So um, Rugby provided us with that opportunity. We've been representing a group on Long Island called Win with Wind, which is uh, residents of uh, uh, Eastern Long Island who are supporting a big offshore uh, wind farm. There's a small group of billionaires who uh, don't want the temporary construction disruption that would be uh, caused by the cable that would take the power in from this offshore wind farm uh, into the electrical substation. Um, so we actively participated in the uh, lengthy administrative proceedings and in the, the settlement negotiations that led to the uh, state's issuance of the key permits for this project. Uh, there's more fighting ahead. Uh, the, these uh, billionaires have also started a lawsuit. We're intervening against that lawsuit, but I'm very uh, pleased with the contribution that Brownlee has made to the uh, progress of, of what would be uh, New York's first offshore wind farm. Well, our hope is that Reldy will increase in, in size. We hope to uh, get funding to hire another one or two more lawyers and to be able to take on more cases. Uh, there are so many renewable energy projects that are going to be proposed around the country. Uh, we know that a significant chunk of them will be uh, opposed locally, and we hope to help support the local communities that want these facilities. We've already seen that in the two and a half years that Relby has been practicing that we've grown and we've become somewhat well known across the country and so increasingly clients are reaching out to us through our website or because they heard about us through word of mouth. But my hope is that we will continue to expand and become even more established so that people who are supporting renewable energy facilities in their communities and need some legal assistance know that we're out there and we have their backs and that we're available to provide legal support to them. To Hillary who answered my emails on Sundays and after hours and never made me feel like I was a burden or the friends for being a burden. And to Michael Gerard for your expertise and your amazing knowledge of everything. We would not be where we were without any of you. Thank you.